Hey y'all, this is your girl Sonia, and welcome back to She Says She Says Sports. Please welcome back Rod Walker, sports writer with the New Orleans Advocate. Hi Rod, how are you today? I'm good, Sonia. Glad to be back on. Thank you. Boy, it's five weeks we've been together um, doing this. It's just, I can't believe, I mean, it, it went by really quick. And, you know, the last dance finally came to an end on Sunday with 5.9 million viewers. And from my understanding, the ratings were around six million each week. So that's that's pretty good. Yeah, I was I was looking at something the other day, and they were talking about those numbers, and uh, you know, and that that doesn't include people that record it and you know go back and watch it later. Oh, yeah. So I mean, that, so those numbers are really they're probably a lot higher than you know even that, than we than we even think. That's think crazy. Number here, so. Has yeah. any other docu series been that high? I, I mean, I can't remember. I, I wouldn't think so just based on, I mean, again, we've talked about how the last dance was just at a perfect time. I mean, it came when there was mm-hmm. absolutely That's nothing true. going on. and So it, it would be hard to, you probably could have put, you could have yeah. put the Ryan Walker story on it. Folks, <laughs> folks, folks are so bored, they probably, they probably watched that too. So, uh, so what are you trying to say? No, I'm just saying, no, I mean, <laughs> Ryan Walker story. Obviously, Michael Jordan's a big name, but I'm just saying that there are a lot of people that may have watched that wouldn't have watched. That wouldn't normal. have because they were yeah. at home. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. I got you. Well, you know, last before we get into the last dance, the last um, parts nine and ten, uh, we talked about <clears throat> the battles, you know, that's been going on via Instagram, and last week was Buddha, Chris, and Nelly. Well, remember, I, you know, I told you I was going to watch it, and I was thinking, you know, I was telling you I I see Luda, Luda winning that one, but I really didn't even watch it. I was I was busy cooking, and I just usually I I just I don't know I wasn't mm, I just didn't feel like watching it. Did you? Yeah. Did you can't see I, any of it. Well, I looked at pieces of it. I I think when I first what happened is I first tuned in and. And Nelly was having technical difficulties, so I'm like, okay, here we go, here we go, here we go again. So I mean, and once that happened, I sort of like tuned out. But I mean, I I did have it on. I just wasn't like just locked in and watched it. But I mean, I was I was listening to it, and I mean, they both did have a you know a lot of good songs. I think Luda had more hits, but Nelly had some hits that were like really big. So I think Luda had. If you're going just for for quantity, Luda could probably had it, but I thought Nelly had, you know, I mean, some of his songs were really, really strong, but uh, it wasn't one that I was just, you know, anxious to watch. I mean, I I, yeah. I did do it just because everybody else was doing it, but, uh, yeah. And now they're kind of throwing out other, you know, like other, um, they got this Keisha Cole and Ashanti, which I don't see that being a match because Ashanti is more like a, Back in the early 2000s, she was more uh, a hit maker song, a hit maker girl. You know, she she was yeah. featured on a lot of songs, but yeah. you know, and she was like kind of coming out. But then Beyonce came out with her first album and snatched those dreams away from her. <laughs> so <laughs> that didn't work. But I can't see Ashanti and Keisha, Keisha Cole. That's that's not a good match for me. Then they're talking. Well, Monica and Brandy would have been perfect, but Monica says she's not doing it. Um, who else? That it was somebody else we mentioned. Um, oh, Usher and Chris Brown. And Chris Brown, yeah, that was one I've seen. I I saw Jodeci and Boys to Men, uh, which I guess you, you didn't you didn't think that would be a good one, but I actually like both of those those groups a lot. Oh, I love both of them, but I can't yeah. see. Uh, uh-uh. Jodeci. I mean. And the, I mean, it was I don't know, and I guess I'm looking at Jodeci as they are now. Now, and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I don't know. I mean, and not to judge them, I, I I love them. I'm a huge fan of Jodeci, especially Diary of a Mad Mad Band. That was right. my favorite album by them. Yeah. However, I just I don't know. I yeah, I, I was forward to being against new new edition, but that's not good. I can't even see anybody going against New Edition. So except yeah, by the New Edition has they got too many too too many hits. But um, oh, I know the other night, like, and this is something I do sometimes. I I just get on YouTube and just watch a certain group and just kind of watch like 
all them like live performances and stuff. The other day I was just watching uh, what happened to Wanye Morris from Boys and Men. He had his, I don't know if you saw the video of his, he got like four or five boys, sons, and they were singing um, something. Anyway, that video was like going, it went viral on the internet. So I, I just started like just watching all of Wanye's stuff and uh, I stayed mm-hmm. for like two hours just watching YouTube videos and just watching wow. that singing. Because I think he's like really, really, I don't know if people talk about how good of a singer he is enough, but anyway, so I was just kind of doing that the other night. But. No, he's an amazing singer. I actually yeah. have seen them, and I saw them in concert twice here at the at the, at the State, State Fair. State. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, seen them, I saw them like twice at the fair too, and, and that's when I was in Jackson. But, but, but yeah, they, uh, I think that's the only time I've ever actually seen them was at the fair. I don't know if I've even seen them anywhere else. Yeah, and I was trying to see him in Vegas in 16 for my birthday. I was there for my birthday in Vegas, but they had just cut, they were taking a, like a, I guess, a little hiatus for the summer because my birthday okay. was July. Actually, it's July 20th, two, uh, it's two months from today. <laughs> oh, so. okay. Happy early birthday. <laughs> oh, no, that's not going to work. I'm going <laughs> that in July. I know how you be on Facebook, like, it's too many, y'all, just happy. I don't want that. I want, okay. I want a special birthday, my right. But, okay. uh, so yeah, I, but they are amazing. They do a great show, as you know, um, live shows, right. and I, you know, I really enjoy their voices. Yeah, Wanye is a beast. He can sing. Yeah, he, he can, can go sing. now. Yeah, he can sing, and so, but it'll be interesting to see what comes up next with them. So we'll see. Right. Well, let's get on to the last um, part nine and part ten. Um, to me, these two um, segments mainly were about more, more about closure. They were emotional and, you know, him kind of thanking his teammates. What what are you what are you um what was your take on the last two? Uh I think yeah, I mean they were basically just <laughs> trying to wrap it up I guess and um I thought I think the thing that stood out to me the most and this is just kinda of off the top of my head, I thought mm-hmm. the ending when they talked about how Phil had them all, you know, write the little note on the sheet of yes. paper and I mean, mm-hmm. I, I just thought, you know, because most teams, they just, you know, season's are over, they have a little team meeting, and they just kind of go. So that just says a lot about Phil Jackson that he, um, you know, just made a kind of a ceremony out of it, something that they'll always remember. And um, it was just a – I don't think any of us knew about that, so I just thought that was, like, really interesting that, that Phil Jackson thought to do all that to bring some some real closure to it, to, to, it, to what they had done. To, I mean, to an amazing dynasty, to amazing two, three peaks. It was, you know, I've always liked Phil, but after seeing this docu series, I like him even more. He was, he was the glue that kind of kept them together, and right. you know, forged them to become champions. Because I don't think without him, they may not have gotten six. Right. I, I really do not. So it was it was it was very interesting, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. But you know, when we left off at part eight, when Reggie Miller was saying, you know, he was going to dethrone Mike, and you know, of course, we know it didn't happen. But it opens up with Reggie Miller explaining, you know, like you know, he wasn't afraid of Mike, and how you know how some people were very afraid of Mike, and a, and a lot of players seemed to. I I don't know if it was. Do you think it was fear? Or reverence, you know. When I say reverence, you know, respect. I mean, yeah, I, I think it was more respect. I don't know if it was. Yeah. I don't. Th- I don't think it was fear. But I do think Michael was so good that that reverence was probably different than any reverence for any other player. I mean, I just, I just think True. Michael had sort of made that made a case for how good he was, and I think, I think, I think it was intimidating for some players, and mm-hmm. and obviously Reg- Reggie wasn't the kind of guy that was going to be intimidated by anybody so right and I mean in the Pacers you know um that Eastern Conference in 98 they you know they gave they gave the Bulls the business I mean it was Larry Bird's first year as a coach for the Pacers and he and you know he and the team felt like they can dethrone MJ and that was a tough you know it was actually a very tough um series for them even MJ even said, besides the Pistons, the Pacers were the toughest team to come out of the East. So yeah. I felt. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, I said the yeah, I mean, you look at that, that team they had. I mean, with 
with Reggie Miller and Mark Jackson and the, the Antonio and Dale Davis and Rick. Yeah. I mean, they had like all the pieces that. Um, I mean, that was the kind of team that could beat the Bulls. I mean, they were physical. They had a good shooter, um, a really good point guard, and, and Jalen Rose on that team. I mean, they were like loaded, and they just they were loaded. They were they yeah. were balling. They had and the pieces now. Yeah, they played calculated basketball, and the games were very competitive. And, yeah. you know, the most memorable game was game four, I mean, to the point where, you know, MJ was bleeding. <laughs> right. they, were, they were fighting to the finish. You know, the lead was 94-93 paces with six point seconds left. Scotty misses both free throws. 2.6 seconds left, and Reggie gets the ball, and they win, tying the series two and two. But this, you know, it was two great quotes in this, in this, um, in the last, um, two of these um, docu-series, I'm sorry. When the media, you know, met MJ, you know, they was asking questions, you know, about them losing, and the most powerful quote he said was, they still got to come through Chicago. Right. And, you know, I laughed because I'm like, they, Michael and the Bulls were so confident during that time. They understood they would lose some games, but when it came to winning and moving to the next level, they had no doubt that they would succeed. And what did that quote mean to you, Mike? I mean, Lord, I'm calling you, Mike. <laughs> you, call me, I, I you, you, you call me Mike like every week, I think. I so. know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, wish I, could talk, I wish I could do my voice like him just so we could play that okay, role. But, I'm like, but oh I, can't, <laughs> I can't do it. But uh, I just thought it, I, I thought it just meant, you know, it just showed there their confidence and just how um, they didn't really have any re- – I mean, it was, at that point, the series was 2-2. Two to two. I mean, they didn't really have any any reasons to um, to doubt themselves. Like, like you said, I mean, they did have to go through Chicago. They had to, they had to win – I can't remember what, how the series was at that point as far as – I don't know if it was even 2-3. If it was 2-3-2 two, two, or if it was 2-2. Two, two. I don't know how they were doing it. I can't remember what the format was. Mm-hmm. but. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I mean, they, had, they still had to come to Chicago. I just thought they were – they didn't really have a reason to be – to doubt themselves at that point. I mean, they just, at the end of the day, I mean, they were the champs and you had to beat them. And you couldn't just win a couple of games and think the series was over because that's just not how Chicago was. I mean, you have to – beating them four times is going to be hard for anybody to do, which, which we saw because nobody could do it. Right. But do you think any NBA team today – to say that same quote with confidence and make good on it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, because I've heard people say it, and Who said I mean, I've heard, it? I mean, I've heard teams say before, you know, I mean, when a series is tied and you go back home, I mean, they, you know, they might say, I think LeBron may have even said it before, like, hey, we still got to gotta go back to Cleveland or, mm-hmm. or go stay there. I, I think people say that, but – yeah, they don't say it like like Jordan said it with that same with that same confidence. I guess is what I'm trying to no. say. No, yeah, I agree. Yeah, um, I mm, at this, I, I don't know if I could say. I, I I don't know. I really I can't see any team right now saying it with pure confidence and you know just I don't know. It's just it's been kind of wishy washy with the NBA right now for me. Um. It's just they kind of soft to me. I don't know, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. It's just I don't. It's just I don't. Mm. Let me just move on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's just like I really cannot picture any team, you know, like in my mind right now that I can say that can honestly say that. And yeah, I don't think it's it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think of the teams. Yeah, I don't know who would. Mm-hmm. There's there's not a team come in because there's not a team right now that's head and shoulders above everybody else. Exactly. And I think the Bulls. I mean, and the Bulls. Yeah, and the Bulls were. Yeah, I mean, they were. Yeah, they were. They were head and shoulders. They were. They were head. They were head. Yeah, and they knew it. And yeah. And they knew it. And that's yeah. why I'm saying when he said that, I mean, the look on his face was like, I mean, they still got to come through Chicago. Right. It was right. To a point where, you know, I think it was on the um, part eight. When they were like, they looked through the schedule and was like, we're not going to lose for three months. Who does that? Right, I mean, right. <laughs> that's how bad they were and how confident yeah. they were. So, right. And I think when the media was asking questions to Mike, 
I mean, because like we were just saying earlier, the Pacers were nothing to play with. They were right. they were balling, and right. you know, we on the back end of Mike's career, and it was just, you know they was just that good. They they were really yeah. good, but I, I think know, they felt like if they played their best game, I don't think they thought it. They knew that if they all came to play and they brought their best game, they didn't think anybody could beat them. And I think that was that was just a thing. Whenever they didn't win, I mean, I, they, I think they always felt like, yeah, we could have done this better or done that better. And I just think when they they knew that when they when they brought their A game, they were they were going to be hard to be beat. Right. Exactly. So you know, and then I. I don't know why they keep trying, Mike. You know, um, Reggie was saying that he was one of the best trash talkers in the game. And he even, you know, I guess he was playing uh, Mike pretty hard or whatever. He said, I mean, you Michael Jordan, the one that walks on water, like, what's going on? <laughs> and MJ looked at him and went to work. And, you know, he walks off court and looks at Reggie and said, never trash talk black Jesus. I mean, <laughs> why y'all keep playing with him? <laughs> you know, just, yeah. It's just like then Byron Russell in 97, you know, well, no, he, you know, ver- just, just, and I'm like, they just having friendly ba- verbal banter with him, you know, but he doesn't see it that way. You know, Byron Russell was like, while well, MJ was playing ba- baseball, you know, why did you quit, man? You you know, I can, I, gar- I can guard you. And he got his chance in the 97 finals, and he didn't do too well. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, you know, but even like, even when Russell even when Russell said to him, I mean, he was just yeah, he was just, he was just kidding like I was, he, he just kidding around, right, right. <laughs> it was no like any, like anybody would do. Yeah, he wasn't disrespecting him at all. But yeah, it it was just like at the end of when they beat the Pacers in the series, and you know him and Bird, Bird talk, they friends, right. And you know Bird said some short words to him, right. He's like yeah, you can go work on your golf swing now. You know it's just right. It's the same thing, right? It's the exact same thing. Yeah. <laughs> So, so it's just like I, I don't know. I mean, it's just he. You know, I can say he was like Jesus on that court. He was something. Yeah, he was. I mean, he was. Yeah. And somebody talked about it in the. I forgot who it was. I I can't remember if it was in the documentary or something I watched after the documentary. I think it was mm-hmm. actually something after. But it just somehow. I think that what separated Michael Jordan was. I mean, he was obviously better than everybody else. But he just made it look so effortless, like when he yes. was, you know what I'm saying? Like everything, was just, he was so graceful. And to me, that's what separates him from, I mean, obviously the confidence and the talent, but just the way he did it, too. And it was it was natural for him. Yeah, everything, it was, right. It was just, yeah. I get, And, you know, when you were saying graceful, I mean, and I totally agree because I'm like, some of these same players are doing the same moves and stuff that he did, but it was different. Just yeah, like it was just different. Yeah, Layla Hathaway. Going back, to, Layla sings effortlessly. I know her personally. I was sitting at a table with her back in '06, and she literally started singing, but making her voice sound like a train, like a. And she does it a lot in shows now. And I guess she had just discovered that gift, and I was yeah. like in freaking awe because I'm like, what is going on? I don't. How are you singing? But you, the chords were, they. She had like three chord, three part harmony. It, I can I can't explain it, <laughs> but uh, she does stuff effortlessly. I, right. I, you know, and Mike, if I could, you know, compare him to a singer that you know, because I, you know, I'm a I'm a Layla fan, and that. He reminds me of that. It's just smooth. It's like butter. It's like that's what right. I do. Right. And it's. I mean, he can't help it. It's just. It's just what he was. But you know, the '97 finals was against Utah, and you know that was a pretty. That was a pretty um, tough matchup. Um, '97 and '98, especially '98 um, Utah Jazz. They they really gave it to him. And we'll get to that. But, you know, they talked about the infamous blue game, game game five. And, you know, I always thought back then, because they mentioned that he had ate something the night before, I always thought it was flu poisoning. I mean, not flu, um, food poisoning. But, Mike, you know, he confirmed it on, this, on the docuseries. Um, day before the game, game five, he's hungry at night, you know, and they order a pizza. So five people come into the door to the delivery of the pizza. 
that I guess it would have really I mean it's Michael Jordan, so I can see people like, Oh, I wanna ride with you just to see him or whatever. But you know, his agent was like, No, nah, he had a bad feeling. He was like, I'm not eating that <laughs> and you know, MJ wakes up at three in the morning throwing up and sick and it's just, you know, he struggled the first quarter of that game. He was, and do you remember, like, he was, well, you saw it Sunday, but he was sweating profusely. I had never yeah. seen him sweat like that. And he was sick. He was, I mean, he was literally, he was really, really sick to the point where his mom asked him not to even play. And she was like, I don't think you should play. And he was like, I got to play. Right. And but somehow, I don't, you know, they kept, you know, putting Gatorade in him, trying to get his, you know, some liquids in him. But the second quarter, I don't know what happened. He came back with some type of strength to get the Bulls back in the game, played 44 minutes with 38 points to take game five. Go on, and I hate to keep asking you these type of questions, <laughs> but do you see any players in this era with that warrior spirit and fight like Mike had, Mike had, Mike had that night? I can't talk today. Uh, no, I don't know if. <laughs> I don't know. I, I guess when I when I try to when I'm trying to think about the guys in the league. When I think of guys who who just play hard every single night, I mean, I always think about Russell Westbrook because I think he always brings it, like regardless. But I, I mean, I don't know mm-hmm. if he could have led a team like that. But I mean, Russell Westbrook will always play hard. He's gonna he does. He don't ever sit. I mean, he you know he's gonna try to play. And he's a guy that I think might could have he would have tried anyway. I don't know. A lot of other guys, I don't know if they would have even. Would have even tried, but um, I mean that was commendable to see. Wait, let me go back to the, to the pizza first because if five people bring me a pizza, I'm not eating it. I don't care. Who I, but I, and, and I, I was reading something. I can't remember who put it out there, but you know they had the list from that. <clears throat> they had like the hotel list for that night, and those guys they don't even use their real. I mean you don't check into a hotel under the name Michael Jordan, but, right. I mean, you know, using aliases and stuff, so I don't even know. That's what I'm saying. How did they even know? I don't even know, know, like, how they, right, I don't even know, I don't really understand that part, and obviously there was a, I don't know if you've heard the conspiracies, well, I ain't going to call them conspiracies, but the theories of, you know, it being a hangover game that Michael actually had a hangover and not food poison, but, I mean, there's been, there's been the flu game, there's been the hangover game, and now there's the food poison, but I don't know who ever <laughs> know which one it really was, but, I mean, we can take his word for it. I mean, he had his his guys say the other night that it was food poison, and I've never had food poison, so I don't know what it's like. But me um, Yeah, I mean, I've, yeah, I've never experienced it, but um, whatever it was, I mean, he was obviously not himself. So, really, I guess what it was isn't really even relevant for him to perform like that under those, you know, conditions. Is you know probably one of the his greatest achievement, because it was a, it was an important game. And I mean, he could have probably sat out. <laughs> maybe he could have sat out. They could have lost, and they still could have won in seven, maybe. But that would have really been, Mm-mm. you know, that would have been taking a chain, a big risk. And um, so, I mean, they need him. Yeah, it was. You know, it definitely shows you how our willpower plays a part in in what we can do. Because right. that, you know, I've never. It was just, you know, and it goes back even when Isaiah hurt. Didn't he hurt? He broke. He hurt his ankle or broke his ankle or something. I can't remember. It was either his leg. Or he his hurt ankle. something. Yeah, and played like that in, in that quarter. Scored all those for twenty played, some points in the quarter. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, that was amazing to me too. I mean, that was yeah. just like crazy because it's like, do you do you not feel the pain anymore, or you just like block it out your your mind and like I got you know I got to focus on this and I guess. Again, that's where the willpower comes in, you know, and just kind of takes over because that was just that was amazing to me. And you're right; it could have been. I had never heard of the hangover. Um, oh, you had Yeah, that was like yeah, a that's I like a bit. saying he was lying. You know, nothing was wrong with him, and I'm like, no, something was wrong with him. Yeah, something was wrong. I, with him. I mean, that that was no reason for him to. Yeah, he wouldn't. Have, I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't know what he. I mean, it does add to, but you don't really gain nothing out of it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And he was sweating so bad. That was yeah. That wasn't fake at all. I mean, I had never yeah. seen that before. So yeah, yeah. You um, have to you have to Google the hangover, the hangover game though, because that theory is definitely it's been out there for a long time. Really? I, yeah, yeah. Really, I've yeah. never heard that before, and maybe I, yeah. I don't remember. I just yeah. remember the flu and the um, food poisoning, and yeah. I always thought it was. But 
And and you're right now. If it was just little old me and five people came to my door, I'd have been like, I'm not what wild is right. here. I'm not eating. Yeah. And I do that sometimes. Even if I go somewhere and like leave my drink or my food open or something. Right. And it's you know people you know I, even if a friend is watching it or whatever. You know, somebody could have did, and I just, I don't do it. I, I'll stop eating or drinking. I just don't feel yeah. comfortable. So you're right. right. I mean, that's that's kind of five people at your door. Yeah, but it is it is Salt Lake City, and that's a city that's, um, I mean, if the Bulls are in town in a place like Salt Lake City, I mean, you know the Bulls, you know they're at that, you know what hotel they're at. But, I mean, it may not be as hard to figure out which room he's in or not. And Salt mm-hmm. Lake City it's a city that's been known for, I mean, they've had a lot of incidents. Um, and, I, I mean, we didn't know about that one, but, I mean, even when we talked about Russell Westbrook, I mean, he had a he had an incident at, at the arena. Uh, I guess that was, I don't know if that was this season or last, that was the last season, I guess, with, with fans, you know, just some of the stuff they do. They're, they're kind of notorious for being really hard on the visiting teams, and they've had sort of racial incidents. Um, and there was another player other than Westbrook that's had one in the past couple of years. I mean, they're, they're just kind of – Utah has just kind of been known for that. And um, so th- to see that they would go to that extent really probably shouldn't be a surprise right. you know, if, you look at, if you look at some of the stuff that's happened recently. So, But they could have killed him or something. I mean, it's like, is it that serious? But, I mean, he sells them. I mean, <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm like, y'all messing with the wrong one. It's just like you can't. He, he really can't beat them sometimes, but, you know, whatever. Um, but one of my favorite parts of this um, part nine was the segment of Steve Kerr. Um, they show Paxton, you know, talking, and, you know, Paxton was a role player, and he was explaining to Kerr what to look for if, if you know, if they was going to trust him. If he was going, if he was going to go to war with him, and Paxton prepared him and passed the torch on the curve, and to me that was great leadership on his part because he didn't right. have to do that. Right. I mean, he didn't have anybody to teach him when he came to the Bulls, and so that said a lot about his character as a person. And as even though he was leaving the Bulls, he was he was a Bull in his heart, and it was like, you know, let's keep this going, you know. I'm gonna right. show you what you need to do, and that. What did you think about that? When you know when they showed that part, because they really didn't have to. But I, I like how Mike. They, you know, they added that that part in there regarding Steve and and Paxson. Yeah, I mean, I thought that was that was neat. I think even now when I talk about Paxson and Kerr, like I sometimes they're I can't even like to me. right, it's like, right, it's like, that's right. That's what I say. It's like the same dude, really. Like, yeah. in fact, I can, sometimes I can't even remember which one was on the. First three feet, and which one on the second? Like I just have to, I have to like stop and think about it. Like they were, right. yeah, they were the same. They were the exact same guy, and they feel the same role. And um, and I, I think, I mean, you want to get Jerry Kraft some credit. I mean, you probably got to credit him for, you know, he found another piece just like the one he he had in Paxson. So yeah, they're definitely interchangeable. And you really don't even say one of their names without saying the other. I mean, you really don't. You you you're gonna mention Paxson, you're gonna mention Curry. It's kind of you know, <laughs> all exactly. It's it's yeah. amazing to me how like I mean they are so much alike and yeah. It's I'm thankful for both of them because they they were truly intricate parts in both um, both three peaks and right. they could I don't think you know they they may not have won sometimes without them. Right. But, you know, it's interesting how, you know, Kerr, he started playing basketball with his dad and his brother in his driveway, just kind of like what Mike did. Right. And, you know, he was not like a outstanding player. In his own words, he even said, I didn't have many girls and not many with <laughs> either. Right. <laughs> However, he ended up at Arizona and thankful for that. But it was interesting, you know, Think about it. You're a freshman in college, and your parents and your brother, your immediate family moved to Beirut. You know, his right. dad was president of the um, American University, right. and, and he ended up getting killed there in 84. And it was just, I, I never knew that. I never knew the story about Steve Kerr and his family. I was kind of like glued to the 
to the um, TV because I'm like, wow. I, uh, yeah, I that, that, that. yeah, that story has been, I mean, it's been out there. It's kind of it's well documented. I was actually surprised they even put it in there because, I, I, like, when Golden State started winning, I mean, that's when I think they, that story started kind of with, with Steve Kerr as a coach. Mm, that story sort of okay, that story yeah. kind of it's, it's, it's been out there like a lot and um so i was like surprised they actually put it back in because i thought i actually thought most people did know that story but um mm -hmm. i thought it was good they put it in and, and if you listen to steve Kerr now like whenever it's a social justice issue or you're talking about like gun control and all that he's always so passionate about it and it, it kind of it goes it goes back to that i mean his dad was shot so i mean that's why he's so outspoken on on issues and um, so yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I thought it. Knowing that you didn't know that story, I mean, I guess it is good that people became aware of it that hadn't already heard it before. But yeah, it's it's, it's definitely been out there about his dad. So well, I guess that explains because you know I would hear him speaking out about you know um, gun control and stuff like that, but I had yeah. no clue what was the connection. Yeah, well, so, that's that's where it all stems from for him. So yeah, he like. <clears throat> If anything, social justice or anything just about that, like he's just not afraid to speak up on anything. And him and him and Greg Popovich are probably two of the best at, at when it comes to that stuff. I mean, they they just aren't afraid to speak up. Oh, I love Popovich. I mean, I know he's not, but I about this in this um, last dance, but he is one of my favorite coaches ever. I love him. Yeah. Um, well, if they had yeah. brought the if they had brought the Bulls back, I guess we'll probably get to this part. If they had brought him back for another a chance to win seven, we would have got Popovich because that's who the, <laughs> the Spurs ended up winning it that next year. But we can get to that later. If yeah, we get into that part. You, you, you're getting ahead of me, boo. <laughs> All right, my bad, my bad. <laughs> I know that would have been. Oh, I, when you were saying that, my wheels was turning. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> we could have got. It would have been over. We probably got three more. But um, but anyway, you know, he threw himself in basketball after this happened. And, it, you know, interesting, both MJ and Kerr had some, so much in common. They were both introduced to basketball by their fathers. Both their fathers were mur murdered and both used sports to deal with pain of the murders. Do you think sports have always been an outlet for athletes to keep moving forward after tragedy? Uh, yeah, I think. Yeah. I think sports is just an outlet for people, period. I mean, Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you even look at this this COVID nineteen we're going through. Yeah, I mean, just even this COVID nineteen. Like now, we sports is the one thing that we're all begging for to get us back to normal. I mean, that's what we it's just what we count on as people. I mean, that's the that's the one thing where everybody can sort of come together. I mean, you, you look in the stands mm -hmm. and you see blacks and whites high fiving each other. That's like the only time we can <laughs> seem to really that's get true. on one accord. So I just think, uh, yeah, I think sports is just an, an outlet for. A lot of people, I mean, obviously a lot of people, for a lot of people, sports is their only way of, you know, getting out of their situation. It's, their, it's, their, it's like their way out. Um, mm -hmm. And, I mean, for, I mean, I'm sure Jordan and Kerr would have been fine regardless. But, yeah, I think for the most part, I mean, sports, sports is, you know, it's, a, it's an outlet for sure. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. I, um, I agree with you. I think it, it, it unifies, and not only does it unify, but like you said, it, it helps. Because think about um, underprivileged kids, LeBron James, um, Kevin Garnett, players right. like that who play sports just to, you know, and they probably, you know, didn't, you know, at that time they probably weren't even thinking about getting to the league, but it was just a way to stay out of trouble for one, right. or you know. It was just you know to be around friends, whatever reason it was, but it was. Definitely, you know, a way to to just keep their mind off of certain things. Right. And so it was. Go ahead. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I mean, I think that. I mean, obviously, what Curry gone through. I mean, he definitely needed something to, so something to like just tone all. That's the right word I'm looking for. He needed to focus on something. You know, yeah. to put all his energy in one place, and I think that was they ended up being the perfect perfect thing for. Him. I mean, if his dad had died, I don't know. He may not even had that same drive and determination. I mean, I can't, I you can't say that, thing. but I'm just saying you just. But I mean, sometimes it takes life-altering events like that to really, you know, make you focus and work on something. That may that may have been the case for him. I don't know. And I, I thought the same thing. No, I agree. And you know, it's 
you you're totally right it that may have you know been the the catalyst yeah I mean he may have gone to the gym and further yeah he might have, that might have been the thing to wake him up in the morning and okay I'm gonna go take 300 shots or whatever you know he just may have needed to do something like that I mean I don't know yeah. but I'm just throwing it yeah. out there no, I agree. And you know, um, you know, in the finals, ninety-seven finals, you know, Kirk he struggled during that finals, but he ultimately came through when it mattered. You know, he he was clutch. That actually, you know, they won the series four-two. Right. And Mike said that's when Kurt earned his wings that night. It was, right. you know, it was just like he, you know, he became, I guess. Kind of what, you know. Same thing we said about Pax a few weeks ago, <laughs> right? Exactly. Go ahead, say that again. Yes, yeah, it's, it's basically the same thing we said about uh, Pax and, you know, a few weeks ago. I mean, he kind of yeah. earned his, you know, he it, Mike believed in him and he came through in the clutch. And uh, so, yeah, that's, again. Boy, he it, came through. He yeah. came through. <laughs> I remember that game. So it was just, you know, I'm, and I love the little, you know, when they were, um, at the parade, and he was saying, you know, Steele wanted to get the ball to Mike, but Mike was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. give it to Steve, you know. Right. And that was cute. That was really yeah. cute because that showed you they had moved on from what happened, you know, a couple right. of years earlier. You know, yeah, a couple of years earlier, and they were friends. And I, you know, I'm, I'm it, it was pretty cool. I, I enjoyed that. So that was a nice segment. But my favorite was the relationship between MJ and his security guard, Gus Lett. And that was a really good story because, you know, even though well, he became close with Mike when he broke his foot, you know, in the early 80s. Right. But he became closer when his dad died. And, you know, per his widow, Mrs. Lett, she was saying, you know, Mike would call him crying at 2 in the morning, and he would go to him. And it was that father and son relationship that he needed. You know, he, you know, it was just like he, God had somebody to step right in for him when his dad was gone in the physical, you know. Right. And just like Mr. Jordan, you know, Gus was by his side. He was a surrogate father, and he was with him so much that Mike actually noticed that he was getting sick. And, you know, told Mrs. Lett to take him to get checked out. And, you know, he was diagnosed with lung cancer. And, you know, after he went through chemo and stuff, he came back to game seven of the Eastern Conference playoffs against the Pacers. And that was the only game MJ and the Bulls had to go seven games in post-play. And, you know, he was there and he wanted to support him. And, you know, after, you know the story. After he won, Mike grabs the ball and gives Gus the winning ball. But it was just interesting to me, you know, um, how you never really saw Mike out. You know, when, when they would, you know, take pictures of him or, you know, he'd be out. He wasn't really out with a lot of guys. Right. But you mainly just saw him hanging out with these security guards. And <laughs> he even said right. that was his entourage. Right. And they were, you know, they were older. Do you think he they was were. hanging out with them because they reminded him of his dad or – it, just, it was safe for him. No, I think, no doubt, I think it, they reminded him of his dad. I think that was his, that's what he was used to. And I think just he needed, I mean, to me it just says a lot about his relationship with his dad because I think he mm-hmm. needed that type of figure to, he needed those kind of guys to fill that void for him. And uh, Yeah. So that's what he, that's what he did. I mean, he just, he, he, he counted them guys. He could, he needed a quote-unquote father figure to, he can lean on for support and for advice, and I think yeah. he knows his guys for that. So, yeah, that's true. That's true. And I'm I'm sure he had other friends, but he, you know, definitely hung out with them for the most part, and and especially Gus. And you know, they didn't they did not say on the show, but Gus died in 2000. He died two years later after they um, won their last um, Marines. Yeah. And, you know, it was just, oh, and, you know, you know how a lot of people, because I'm really, it's amazing how I'm, I'm seeing more and more Michael Jordan haters. I was like, wow, I, I'm still not understanding why. Um, but, 
um, you know, they're always saying Mike didn't do anything for anybody and, you know, he never helped anybody. You know, it was just about him and basketball. But, you know, he paid Gus's medical bills and whatever his family needed. And because he didn't put it out on newspaper, and we talked about this in earlier weeks, he's a private person. And because you do something for somebody, why do you have to let everyone know? I feed right. the homeless twice a year, but I don't put it on social media to get accolades. I, I mean, is this something I feel like I should do and I want to do because God has blessed me, and it can be any of us, you know. <laughs> Most right. people live paycheck to paycheck, so you don't know. You know, it could be any of us on the street right. one day. So, right. you know, but you don't have to share everything. And, I mean, I was always taught real G's move in silence, and right. that's what he does. You know, he doesn't have right. to share everything that he does. So, Right. I think we're in a social media age now where so many people do stuff for likes and yeah comments that I, I just think we – I mean, we need to get away from that, but, I mean, it's – it's just the way society is now. I don't know if it's going to – I mean, it's not going to change, I mean, because of no. social media. So, I mean, but there are people who just – yeah, you should just do it because you want to do it, not because you want somebody to see you doing it. Right. I mean, that's true. And, you know, he – I don't know. But I'm I'm so glad that he, you know, had that relationship with us. And I wonder, does he have a relationship with another older, you know, gentleman now? You know, he's 58 now. Just, you know, I, I wonder, I, I thought about that earlier um, when I was looking at some notes for today and just wondering if he actually has somebody to lean on like that now. So you never know. But moving on to part 10, the final segment of The Last Dance, it opens up with the Jordan children, Jeffrey, Marcus, and Jasmine. And I love to see their accounts and hear their accounts on what on what was happening then because, you know they you know they were children, right? And you know I love the fact that Jasmine she but she didn't even really know who her dad was. Her friends would be talking about him, and she had to Google who he was when she was eleven years old because she was right. like, "He's dad to me." You know what are y'all talking about? And right. Um, but Marcus and Jeffrey, they you know they lived in that era to the point where their mom wouldn't let them go to the um to the um series in Utah in ninety eight because, you know, it was too it was so hostile there. Right. And um I've seen a couple of interviews of them since the docu series came out, including one Monday with Michael Strahan. Did you see that one on I didn't, the end? No, I, I didn't see that one though. But they mainly they talked about um again how competitive their father was and the competitiveness and drive that he had was instilled in them, and it allows them to be successful in all they do. And they actually work for the Jordan brand, they, you know, for the foundation in different capacities. But you notice that he did not mention Juanita at all. Right. Um, how, I don't know. Um, <laughs> if you notice when he won his first um, ring in the gold ball, you can see Juanita. That was the only time you right. saw Juanita in the whole hockey <laughs> series. Yeah. Yeah, but what I love Juanita is the real MVP because she she raised those kids, and you know she she's a girl from Chicago. She's from Chicago, and she wanted them to still not only have Chicago roots, but she wanted them to actually have a balanced life. So I believe Marcus. It was Marcus or Jeffrey. One of them went to Whitney Young, which is a public school right. in Chicago. Right. You know, they weren't, like, just going to private schools. You know, they had to make their beds. They had to do certain things. She still wanted them to be regular kids. Right. And they, her and Mike shielded them from the media. And, you know, they they, they seem, because I follow all three of them on IG, and they all seem like balanced kids. They, you know, not wilding out or whatever so you know i i really you know you got to give give her credit for those children because i'm like you know he didn't mention and i guess i don't know I, i'm not understanding why but he didn't so it is what it is he didn't really yeah I, I, I was wondering if it, i was wondering if it was her choice and she didn't i don't know i, I mean cause I've, I've heard That's people interesting. Yeah. i've heard people just mention that you know people that were surprised that she wasn't 
uh, mention more in the documentary. I mean, just I mean, it's his wife. But uh, again, we don't know if it was if it was his choice or her choice or That's true. or what. But um, I, I I would have liked to have seen more of you know just oh. her her perspective of it. I mean, because she she probably knew it better she than she was there. She was there. Yeah, yeah. And again, I, I mean, I know I know his profession had him away from home a lot. I mean, you can't be that good and not <laughs> work you know, work at your craft. So I, I, okay. I don't know. I mean, I don't know the dynamics of their relationship enough to know. I mean, I know they're not together, but mm-hmm. so, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I would, I would like to have seen her perspective as, you know, um, as a mother and the right. wife of Michael right. Jordan right. and just the fact, you know, because, she, like I said, she played a major role. He didn't have to worry about his children. You know, she was there, and she, you know, she was running. I think she was running one of his um, foundations. You know, she's four years older than Mike, so you know, she was a little more mature, um, possibly in certain ways and areas that he needed to kind of help ground him. So it was just interesting. You know, moving on. I, <laughs> I just, uh, I'd be curious. I'd be curious to see if she comes out and, but she might have just. Might, she may want to totally distance herself from that part of her life. Like, I mean, you know, she's she was married to him. So. To, she has. Yeah. You know. Is she has she remarried? Like, I don't even I ain't kept up with her. She's been. Life. It's been word that she was dating some guy Ken Reynolds. This was back when um, she and Mike first um, were divorcing. Yeah. But she, you know, one thing I can say about them, they are very very private. Yeah. Um, and so. She's mainly, you know, they got this grandchild. You know, Jasmine has a baby. She's, um, I think she's 61. Six, she's four years older than Mike, so she should be 62. Right. Um, okay. But she's just living her life, uh, traveling. And, oh, and I know she was thinking about starting a business, but when they broke up, she was like, that wasn't a good idea because she wanted to just, like, make sure her kids, you know, were well-rounded. So she right. waited till they got out of high school and college. Okay. And you know, before she actually just really lived her life for her, so that says a lot about her, you know, as a mom. And it's just, yeah, but no, she never remarried. But she did okay. say it was interesting because her, she and Mike had a good communication because you know they had to communicate about the kids. Right. But he never was like, oh, by the way, I'm getting married. He never told her he was getting married. <laughs> so, oh, okay. So I, I was like, I wonder why he didn't tell her, but I guess. Some things are just not easy to tell X, I, some X's. I don't know. But whatever. So um, 98 Finals is back with the Jazz. This series was well fought, and I really think the Jazz could have actually won this series, Mike. What do you think? I didn't call you oh. Mike again. <laughs> Why? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the Jazz were the – they came in the series with the best – the Jazz had a home court in this series. You know, they, sure did. This, this series this – series, Started in Salt Lake City, and um, it ended. I think even I think even you're right. I think even back then, I mean, I think we after seeing the series the year before that, I mean, I think most of us thought the, the Jazz had a legitimate shot. I mean, they they had gotten better. I mean, Carl Malone was playing the best of his career. Stockton was playing really well, and mm-hmm. I mean, I, yeah, I think I think they really had. We thought we thought they had a shot at at, at beating Chicago. Well, except Not, that third game. When they right. lost ninety six to fifty four. <laughs> yeah, that was. And I I remember a blowout, but I, I when I started fifty four on the screen, I couldn't even believe it. I was like, wow, when they started that night, I was like, man, yeah. I don't I don't I don't really remember it being that low. <laughs> I do remember them blowing them out of the game, but yeah, that was. I mean, you know, team to fifty four point. Yeah. <laughs> that was crazy. They held them to fifty four points, and you know, with that, you know. It was just like, okay, let's do this, you know, let's go on to win these games and get this third ring, I mean, this um, second three-peat. Right. But Dennis Rodman, um, we hadn't heard (laughs) from him in a few weeks, and that bad boy reputation reared his ugly head. He didn't come to practice after the third game. And, you know, it was (laughs) – it was funny seeing because I remember those interviews and with um, Phil, and he was looking at those me, uh, those um, reporters like he was about to tear their head off. <laughs> he was yeah. like, I mean, he's not here. I don't know where he is. <laughs> you know, it was just like 
they were trying to get, but he was like, I guess media, they can kind of take it too far, but they, they had to ask questions. That's the job. Right. And we, you know, end up seeing Dennis on the TV with Hulk Hogan at WCW. <laughs> it's like, he didn't. I can't even imagine if, if that story happened today, like it would just be bananas. Oh I mean, just, <laughs> it, would be I mean it, it was crazy. It was crazy then. I was that's 22 years ago, but if it happened now, man, it would just be. It would I don't be even know. I, I don't even know. <laughs> right. It's just, it, you know, but what was even more amazing to me, he didn't tell Phil, he didn't tell my, nobody. He just right. left. Right. And he knew if he had to say, well, I got to go do this, you know, right. he'd have been like, no, you can't. So it was just like a kid, but like, you know what, I'll deal with my mom and dad. I, I, and right, right. <laughs> yeah. And, and I saw some numbers on it. He got, did they talk about the fine on the show? Yes. Well, right. I, no, I, they didn't, but they fined him twenty thousand. But he made a hundred grand. Right. That's what I'm about to say. He, I mean, it was a it was a business decision for Dan. But he, I mean, he made the right decision when you when you look back on you know, it. But. Yeah. Exactly. You know, he when you look back, he did. Yeah. Um, but when he came to get, you know, and it was interesting, you know, he was avoiding the media, and I guess trying not to add more attention to what was already right. done. But game four, he he was balling. He had a good right. game despite right. making the passes. He even made a, both free throws. And, right. You know, his percentage is very low. The win, the Bulls win by four. But, Rod, do you think had they lost game four, they would have blamed Dennis? Oh, without a doubt. Well, <laughs> I shouldn't say without a doubt, but he would have taken, he would have taken a lot of heat. Oh, yeah, he's definitely a part of it. And, uh, and I mean, it, the series probably changes a little bit. If, you know, I mean, again, we know how tough the series was, so any loss in a series like that, I mean, it definitely swings the, the momentum another way, but uh, and if Dennis had, like, missed the free throws or something, and even though going to wrestling has nothing to do with you making two free throws, he would have taken a, yeah, he would have taken a big hit for it, and um, that would have been all the talk, I mean, for the, and, he, and deservedly so, I mean, if you do that, I mean, you you, you put the you, team you, in you, you, Right, and you got you got to be held accountable for it, so, yeah, he, if they had lost, he would have taken some of the hit, and he would have Deserved to. Yeah, he was putting the team in jeopardy as well as the three peat. And um, like you said, him going to a wrestling match shouldn't have made a difference. But we know Dennis parties. Um, right. Dennis kicks it. He ain't just right. gonna go and you know flip a couple people in the ring. He gonna drink, smoke, whatever right. else he do, and ball right. out right. until you know it's time for him to get on the plane. So. Um, but you're right. That would have made the that would have been a difference maker because they ended up losing Game Five, and the right. Bulls were tired and mentally tired, mentally and physically, to the point where if they had lost that game, they lost Game Five. Game Six was crazy because Scotty had stiffness in his back. Right. So that would have you know that could have changed the whole scenario of this three peat, the second three peat right. thing. Yeah. yeah. But you know, Scotty, you know, he does that little soft dunk in the first quarter, and it took him out the game. And I've had back issues before, and right. I know that that's nothing to play with to the right. point where he could not return the first or second quarter. And the Bulls, they, they, they struggled without him. They struggled majorly without him. And, you know, he comes back third quarter, and Mike was like, just, you know, do whatever you can. Just yeah. be a decoy. Just be on the court. Yeah. Just be on the, just yeah, be on just the be court. Just be out here. Yeah. But yeah. we let you know his presence with the Bulls in with the Bulls and in that game was critical. He was right. needed, and you know, despite all the things that has that has been said in the series that was negative about Scotty, he was definitely an intricate part of the Bulls dynasty, just like yeah. MJ was. Right. And he was a hell of a player, and he should continue to be treated as as such. It's just. You know, we really saw that he was needed, and we yeah. saw it several times. But that game, had he not been there, right, they wouldn't have won that one. Right. Game. right, it was going seven. Yeah, we was going seven, and you know, um, another quote in the Dr. series after this game, you know, Mike said they can't win until we quit, and they could have right. gave up. Especially Scotty could have been like, "I'm not going back. I can't do it." Um. You know, I just my back, I cannot. But it showed it was a true definition of a warrior. 
that night, but you know, of all of them, you know, it was. Right. It could have been Game Seven, and I, I, I don't know. That win was poetic, Rod. It was like it was scripted for a movie. Like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that know, needs to be his. That needs to be his last shot. <laughs> yeah. What's what's I mean? What's the name of the um? Like one of the the athlete movies. I, something with the Titans with Denzel Washington. What I cannot uh, remember. Remember the Titans. Yeah, stuff like I mean, it was just like it was scripted for yeah. a movie, and you know, like they come out on top with everything that was going on, and it was right. just you know that shot that he did, the second seven second seven seconds left. It was amazing. It was definitely um, historical, and it was a great way to end his season with in his career with the Bulls. It was it was perfect. Do you think had they lost game six, they would have won the series back in Chicago? Uh, no, I think that series was – that's what I said. I think it was 2-3-2 two, two then. I think they mm-hmm. – no. I think the last game was going to be in – because Utah, Utah had home court. Yeah, they, they, they won in think, um, Utah. I know, but I'm saying I think the way the playoff format was that year, it was, it was two in Utah – no, no, no. It was two in Utah, three in Chicago, Chicago yeah. and then the last two were back in Utah. Right. So that was game six. No, no. I'm saying I'm saying the first two games were in Utah. Right. The next three games were in Chicago. In Chicago. And the last two, because that's five right there. The last two would have oh, been in Utah. Oh, you, oh, I'm sorry. So they would not have been in Chicago. I'm sorry. I right. I'm saying, right, right. I'm saying so they would have been back in Utah again. And But do you think they would have won? I mean <laughs> – we say enough of joy to believe that they would have won, but I don't like. I don't know. It would have been that game seven would have been something like it would have been. I, I don't know. Like I, I just don't know because I mean, it's hard to say that Michael Jordan wouldn't have won anything because he just always finds a way, and it probably mm-hmm. would have just it probably would have just added to his legacy like he does something. Crazy that you know he scores forty points in the last quarter. I mean, he he would have done something, I think, to to find a way to win. But that probably been the toughest game they had. That would be the game that we'd be talking about probably from now on if yeah. they had played a game seven in the finals because they never did play a game seven in the finals. Never. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, it would have been. I just can't really. I mean, we, again, we've just seen so much of him that we just. You really can't imagine him losing in the finals because we never saw it. So I, we I don't. Never saw I just, it. It's hard for me to even like think about it actually happening. I guess is what I'm trying to say. I think they would have won only because, and like you said, um, first of all, they knew that this was their last year together. Yeah. Because yeah. Krause had already announced it. Right. Really in the season. So in their mind, this is Bill's last year. This is our last year. And. Yeah. Mike's so competitive, you know, he, they wanted to get that second three seat. Yeah, but I, I will say this though. Or, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know how many I don't know how many game, how many days were between Game Six and Game Seven. But if it was like, if it was the like next a, day. Well, it wouldn't have been the next day, but it'd been like two days later. I mean, mm-hmm. they give him a, a break. I don't know if no. Scotty could have. I don't know if, what Scotty could have done. Like, if Scotty's back wasn't ready in two days. I don't know if the Bulls would. I don't know. I don't know if they could have beat them without Scotty. I, I will say that. Like if Scotty yeah. just couldn't go at all, like I just don't know. If, I don't know if they would have had enough left <laughs> left in the tank. I mean, Jordan would have had to do something. He would have had to like just really go off for them to win. I think. Like he would just had to say, "Look, this is my game. I'm shooting, and we go. I'm putting y'all on my back. I'm gonna score fifty or whatever I got to do it for us to win." Because I just, yeah, winning without Scotty would have been tough. It would have been very tough. Yeah, you're right. And, um, you know, well, thankfully we'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm glad about that. Um, I'm glad the fact, like you said, them going seven games, we had never seen that before in the in the finals. So in the finals, right. Um, I'm just glad it never happened. Um, but then, you know, we look at, you know, the season is over, and I like how, in the docu, they use Krauss as the Yoko Ono of the Bulls. You know, <laughs> you know, like yeah. he was a Yoko Ono, but it at this point it kind of really wasn't him. Right. It was 
it was Ron, Ron's door. You know, he offered Phil the opportunity to come back. The Phil said he didn't want to, you know, go through the the job of rebuilding another right. team. And Reisdorf, Reinsdorf didn't want to bring him back. He said the market value would be too high. And, right. you know, they asked Mike how would he feel, you know, how did he feel about that. And he was like, the 98 was where the craftsmanship came in because I knew how to use my mind as well as my body. And it was maddening to him because he felt they could have won a seventh ring. Right. Do you think they could have they could have won another ring? Um, and when he said that, I was surprised because I don't think I had ever heard them even talk about winning a seventh. Like I never like heard anybody come out and say that. Me but either. I think because um, when he first said, it, I was like, oh, I don't know. They, everybody was getting so. I felt like the window was closing for him. Mm-hmm. But then when I looked at, I went and looked at like I said, oh, let me see what happened that next season. And that next season was an NBA lockout where they only played fifty yep. games. Sure did. And I think that would have worked in the Bulls' favor because, I mean, <laughs> I mean, those guys were getting older, but just playing 50 games with that team. Versus I mean, 80, I mean, 82, that, that, yeah, it would have made a difference. Yeah, it made a big difference for them. And uh, you look at the Eastern Conference that year, the, the Knicks finished eighth in the East that year. And they upset, mm. Miami, they, they upset Miami in the first round. And the Knicks ended up sure getting to the finals as the eighth seed. So I think the Bulls probably could have came out of the East and I, that, they'll play San Antonio in the finals, and um, I mean that was Tim Duncan and David Robinson. I think the Bulls probably could have beat them with. Uh, I mean they just had so much more experience in the Spurs than those Spurs did. Right. So um, I think they probably could have. If it was an 82 game season, I don't know. I just think that might have been. I think I just think the Bulls were. I think they might have been. They were on a de- they were declining a little. I mean they they, they were getting up there in age. People yeah. were starting to catch up with them. So. Um, That's true. That's true. And um, you mentioned earlier about Krauss. You know, you, you mentioned that he should have got, you know, the credit. Yeah, Do you well, think Krauss got the credit in this docuseries that he should have? Because, you know, people, they didn't even, like, really praise him for anything in this docuseries because if it was not for him, we wouldn't have got several of those players, um, Dennis, Paxson. Um, who else did he bring on? Who coach? Who coach? I mean, and you got the guys Scottie. he got. I mean, he, he I mean drafted Scott. Yeah, drafting Scott and Horace. Yeah, those guys. So. He, he did some major work to right. actually put the pieces together. Right. And they did have a part in there where Scott like, acknowledged him, and I was, like, surprised to hear that. You know, Scott was like, we need me to give Kraus credit for – I forgot exactly what his exact words were, but Scotty mm-hmm. did acknowledge him. And I thought, to me, I think that was the only part of the documentary where <laughs> Krause really got the credit he deserved. I mean, he right. he, he, built a, he put a really good team together. I mean, you, so they you can't take him the, at the thing. At the, right, at the, at the, at the <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that was just, I mean, they knew that the, everything was over at that point. On. But, yeah. yeah, but, yeah, he, he, he probably didn't get his, his his proper due. I mean, he's a GM. I mean, he put the team together. So, yeah, he, he probably he deserved more than, than he got. And, you know, and if he was alive still, maybe he would have got more. You know, maybe they would have talked to him. And could, we could have saw a different side. And, I mean, since he's not, I mean, it's just kind of hard to. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't know, what, I don't know who you could have talked to about him. Talk to his, I don't know if his wife is still alive. Oh, I don't know. But, you know, it's amazing thinking about what we just said about crowds going back to the first, part series, you know, first part right. one and two, we talked right. about him, and we talked about how he was this little boy just trying to fit in, and, you know, he did these great things for this team, but in the end, he still really didn't get the credit that he wanted. He just wanted to be, felt like he, you know, he did something, right. and they still did not give him that credit from part one to part ten, except, right. you know, Sadi did give a little shout out. Right, he got he got all the blame in the world for tearing it up, but he yep. got none of the credit for for building it up. And I and think that was the to me that was the problem. I mean, he should have got at worst he should have got equal credit for both. I mean, you can if you want to be mad at him for tearing it down, that's fine. But you still got to give him his props for building well, it up. Even I did in in the first show we did together. I was like, I because I was right. not, I was not a fan of his because I was right. around when all of that was going on. 
Right. However, I gave him, you know, props because if, if it was not for him, we wouldn't have won those rings. Right. And they can, you know, argue and say, no, we wouldn't have got those rings without what he did. Right. Right. He brought that team together. But speaking yeah. of Horace Grant, um, I saw I saw an article, and I think you put it on your page as well. Yeah, I posted it. Yeah. Of, yeah. of Horace talking about. Um, well, he said this so-called docu-series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he kept calling it so-called, yeah. He said that several times. Yeah. But um, he, you know, give me your take on that, and I'll, I'll, I'll say what I have to say. Um, I think, and I think, I'm trying to think who else is on that team that might come out and say stuff. Uh, he might be oh, the only one. Oh, it's, it's, it's Scott, I don't know. I don't know if Scotty will ever, I, I think Scotty likes and he respects Mike enough where he wouldn't do it and, I think they're so connected that he don't he would never want to uh, destroy their relationship. But mm-hmm. it's gonna be more I, people coming out though. Yeah, I but I do. I, I, cause I think, and I've seen people say that Scotty hadn't said anything because he doesn't really like the way the documentary portrayed him. And I do agree with Horace a little bit that the documentary probably was one is side slanted. To, it was one side. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like yeah, it's Michael's side and. Whatever he said, I mean, that's kind of what <laughs> what went in it, and so I mean, I I can see the um, I can understand Hart saying that uh, he was he was doing a radio interview and he just kind of he he expressed how he felt about it, man. So I was, I mean, it does sound kind of like sour grapes now, but um, I, I I get it. <laughs> if you if you feel like, and I don't know when the stuff came, was the stuff about Jordan taking his food that wasn't in the documentary that just came out mm-hmm. somewhere else, right? No, that was that was that was um, Horace saying that. Yeah, it wasn't in a documentary at all. Right, right, right. It wasn't in there, but yeah. Yeah, so Horace that, talked about it, and he was like, "If he had to try to take my food." <laughs> you right, know? but I'm saying, yeah, so, so I'm saying when that came out, because that rumor came out like what two or three weeks ago. I heard people saying that yeah, they say right. Jordan took. I don't even know who. I don't even know where it came from. But then Horace like disputed it and. Um, so I get it. I mean, you you don't want to make yourself – you don't want people thinking that Jordan was just punking you like that. So I, I guess I understood, I understood where Horace was coming from. Well, you know, um, I get what he, where he's coming from. One thing I did agree with him on, you know, he was like, you know, which was funny because, you know, I love Michael Jordan. You know that. Right, right. He, I've been calling him a snitch from the beginning. And right. he was like, you know, he calling me a snitch, he's a snitch. And one thing right. that he brought up that you and I talked about, I still can't understand. And Harris was like, why would you even bring up the fact about, you know, your rookie year in the room with the players drinking and getting high or whatever? What right, right. Bringing that right. Up? That, was, that was absolutely no reason to do that. It was no reason for that <laughs> to even be in the docu-series. Because I'm like, where are you going with this? Because I'm like, was it going to, you know, when I'm listening to it that first day, I'm like, I'm trying to see where he was, and then that was it. We didn't talk right, about it. Wasn't it. Even, it wasn't, right, it wasn't even going anywhere. It was just, uh, he just threw it out there and, and, and ran from it, right? Like, yeah, so, yeah, right, just, just snitch it. Yeah, that's what he did. You and then Hor- Horace also brought up the, the – um, About Scotty. About Scotty, the, the game, the, the 2.8 or 1.8. Right, he wasn't even there, so, yeah. But, I mean, again, yeah. it, it's a Bulls documentary. It wasn't just a yeah, Jordan but, documentary. But, and that's true. Uh, but – if you had taken that part of the documentary out, I don't think anybody in the world would have said, oh, I can't believe they left the part out when Scotty didn't check in the <laughs> right. game. Like, no, nobody would even, was even thinking about that. So, wasn't even yeah, thinking they, about it. Right, so that wasn't necessary. And I can, I can understand Scotty. Scotty probably thought it and like, wait a minute, why is this even in here? Right. So, but like but, said, but, but they, they did ask Scotty about it. Huh? Yeah, it was, yeah. I said, but they did ask Scotty about it, so maybe he did know it was going to be in there because, you know, he said he would, you know, he said he'd do it again if, <laughs> it's, it's the same situation. So, so they did ask him about it, but uh, again, it, it just wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't needed. I mean, there was some stuff in there that wasn't a lot of stuff that wasn't needed, but that was the one I thought that wasn't needed. And obviously, Jordan yeah. just missed well, those reason. those two were not needed. Period. Right, right. It, just the needed. the hotel um, scene, his rookie year, and that one. Um, Harris has the right to speak up for himself. Um, I do remember, you know, like a few weeks ago, like you saying, the um, stories coming out, Mike was like, he didn't have a good game, don't give him food. I mean, are you kidding? I, I You know, I know. But I don't, I don't even know if that was said. I, I don't know. 
Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Yeah. No, I was going to say, I don't even. <laughs> <laughs> you the guest. Nope. You the guest. Okay. Go ahead. No, I just say, like, even even that story that came out, I don't know if it was said and if Michael just, you don't really know the context that Michael could have just been saying, like, don't give him no food. He didn't play good. Like, he could have just said it, like, jokingly. Okay. Yeah. Or he could have been, so I don't even know. So I think a lot of this stuff just gets misconstrued because we don't know the whole, you know, you just see the words, but you don't know how it was said. So I, I don't know. I don't know how Mike said it. Yeah, you know, so that's what I'm like. That could have been the case, and I can't see him doing something. I, I mean, and then I don't know. I, I don't know him personally. Um, I know he's real competitive. He could have done that, you know, right. but he could have said it jokingly. Right. You know, and even, you know, in that article with Horace, he was saying that, um, you know, he didn't even know him. And I, it's not necessarily that you and him have beef. He's telling what was going on and what he thought. He right. thought that you were the person that was telling the stuff to Sam Smith. Now, <clears throat> whether you, you know, you said you didn't do it. You said, you know, you had respect enough for the team to not, you know, do stuff like that. Right. But, I mean, we'll never know who actually right. told. It could have been several, like Har said in the interview, it could have been several other players that told it. So right. a lot of play, they didn't. some of them didn't like Mike. Right. It was a job to them, and they did what they had to do, and they probably, you know, so who knows. But, you know, yeah. also Har probably, you know, they were saying he didn't like that Mike was getting a lot of attention. And, you know, it's just I don't know, but he even said that they he felt you know he didn't even know they had beef. He thought they was cool. Right. He actually donated to something, some type right. of right golf thing. Or something. Yeah, he said Jordan gave him a some autograph, something for his golf tournament or something. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. I don't. I really don't think that that he has a problem with him. He was just saying what was happening. Now right. he had, probably had a problem with BJ. I mean Hodges. We didn't even see him. Right, we Craig never saw Hodges. Him. Craig, Craig Hodges. Right, we never saw him. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, and like you say, it could have been a way um, Craig probably didn't want to speak, but I don't think that's the case. You know, we were saying Juanita probably didn't want to speak, or, but I don't think that was the case with Craig Hodges. Um, I don't think he has a problem with Horace. I think he was just saying what he thought actually happened. Right. And um, But I can understand if, if you Horace Grant and you just watch, you're at home watching a documentary, that you that you're a part of. I mean, they've asked you questions, and you got a chance to yeah say stuff. I, I can see how that would bother you, you know. To but even though he, he got a chance to answer the question in the documentary, I still it still could bother you a little bit if you're watching a documentary. And and again, they know way more about what's really going on than any of us. Yep. So if you're watching this and you you seeing stuff, you're like, oh, I wouldn't really like that. Like I can see that, you know. That would probably make you mad over over five weeks. You just seeing all these little different things, and like, wait a minute, that wasn't really that didn't really how that went down. So, right. So I get it, and again, like none of us will ever know except we'll those guys know. on the team and Phil Jackson and the people that were in that that were really there. Well, all I can say is, regardless of that, this docu series um, has proven that Michael Jordan is the goat. A lot of people still don't feel that. You know they. I've seen means of them, and I love Bill Russell, you know, putting up his rings versus Mike. And it's not just about the rings. You have to remember, this man changed the culture of basketball. Right. It's more than just getting rings. He, they did something that no other team did. Even a couple of weeks ago when they, you know, they mentioned Magic and Bird saved the NBA. But Michael Jordan, they took it to, like, a Broadway level where people right. were excited to watch basketball. And it was, you know, it was worldwide at this point. Nobody had ever did that before. So when you look at the GOAT, he changed the landscape of the NBA. It's not just the rings. It's not just the MVP. All of those, they play a part. But those other players who may have more rings than him, who got better um, stats in him, they did not make the change that he did to basketball to to the NBA. You know, so yeah. You know, and to me that's to me that's what that's what separates him. I mean, that's what separates. I, think, I mean, Jordan could have gone five and one, 
and he still would have been who he is. But I mean, obviously, six and zero just made him pretty much like <laughs> like someone he'll they'll never be dethroned. Because I mean, I mean, it's per- per- perfection. So I mean, you're not nobody's probably gonna ever top that. But never. even if he had gone five and one, I think just what he did for the game is probably enough to, that that that's what makes him, you know, the greatest of all time to me. That's what makes him the greatest of all time. And I mean, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm I try, you know, I don't even when I see this stuff, I usually I I would try to get into, and I was like, I'm not going to argue what I already know what is true. So this man, right. in his career, he eliminated 20 Hall of Famers. And he, Patrick Ewing, fought four times <laughs> from getting a ring, right. 20. And these were some of the best players that ever played the game. And they, they could not get a ring because this man was in the playing basketball. So, right. I mean, it is what it is. Um, I think it was, you know, it was a great docuseries. One, because, you know, I'm a fan. I'm a Bulls and MJ fan. So, of course, um, it was great to me. Some of the stuff did I agree with? No. You know, we've 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 talked about that so anybody listening to this show, they can't say I was just biased and thought, no, he was a snitch. Um he had issues just like he's a man. He has flaws. Right. But when it came to basketball, nobody can argue what he did on that court. And, you know, you can, you know, and it wasn't like they were cheating, for, you know, the ref was cheating. You know how we watch games on social media. Right. They were like, oh, um, um, what's his name? The Patriots, they they got the refs on their on they team today. Oh, yeah. No, you've yeah. never heard that in any of the games when they, they played real basketball then. And it was, you know, it was to, they did what they had to do. And they, they were a force to be reckoned with, period. So, right. any last thoughts? I'm just I'm glad we got a chance to see this and again I, I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. I'm glad. I'm really I mean, obviously it was a chance for us to go back down memory lane, but I'm yeah. just, I'm glad for some of these younger people they didn't know who Michael all they heard was the stories that we told. I'm glad they got a chance to, to see who he was and um I mean I've seen like even some some of these Saints players who were you know, these guys are twenty three, twenty four, so they didn't really know who he was. They just heard about him. So I can just see that how much they appreciated him and they've sort of been able to see his work ethic and that, that competitiveness. And I think I think we're gonna see some different I think when whenever we get sports back, I think mm-hmm. this documentary is gonna make we're just gonna see a difference in some athletes now because I think they're gonna see what it takes to, to be great. And I mean I obviously they're not they're not gonna be Michael Jordan great, but I just think they're going to be great in their own. Right. And now they're going to be, yeah. They're going to reach their full potential now because they know what it takes to get there now. I love that, Mike. I, let me stop calling you Mike. I love I that, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> I love what you, I mean, you're right. This may change their thinking of, you know, let me sit out this game because I'm tired or I don't want to hurt right. myself and be ready for the playoffs. No. Give it all you got. All right. People will, people will paying money to see you. Right. Well, we need you to do what you need to do. I mean, you know, give it all you got. Just play the game. (laughs) You know, it's just so, I I agree with that. I totally agree. Rod, I thank you so much for hanging out with me for the last five weeks. It doesn't even seem like it's been five weeks. It it, it flew by. No, it really did. It flew by. by. Once once we got started, I mean, it was just, you know, every week you're just looking forward to Sunday and then you're looking forward to the next Sunday, and now you look back and it's over so with. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> I know you're not. I, I tell you, we need to just, somebody to tell Mike that the, that the documentary went and all that. So he that can come out and, so he can, so, he can do some, he can do some more. So, okay, so what he's talking about on Sunday, <laughs> after the documentary is over, Rod uh, put the post up. T- tell the post that you put up. I don't, I don't want to mess it up. Uh, I'm not looking at that. I think I just said somebody needs to tell Michael Jordan that that the last dance was the second or third best documentary of all time. <laughs> just to just to make him mad so he can you know, give us a few more episodes to get us through the rest of the uh, through the I summer. So. Yeah, uh, somebody needs to tell him. Yeah, yeah. Somebody needs to tell him so he can get angry because yeah. he's like, oh really? Oh, is that true? So <laughs> right. you know, but um. Yeah, it's been, I've enjoyed you so much. I'm so glad that um, I thought of you and was like, you know what, I'm going 
perfect squad <laughs> to do this with me, you know, and it was perfect. I, and, you know, first it was just supposed to be the first, and I'm like, no, nah, I just something. And I could have got different people, yeah. but I'm glad that we did this. And actually, you know, today I was like, we're not going to be on the phone for hours. Yeah, we've been on, it's an hour. We've been over an hour. <laughs> So, it always goes long when we talk about mics. So. I know it, it time flies, but thank you so much. Tell the um, listeners how they can follow you. Um, on Twitter, it's Rod Walker Nola, and on Instagram, it's R Walker nineteen oh six. And I and I definitely want you back on the show soon. Okay. Um, okay, we can we can do that. We can, okay. we can talk about some whatever sports, music. Uh, maybe we get a Beyonce, Rihanna battle or something, I don't know. We can talk about that or whatever. <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah. please follow me on C-Sexy Safe Sports on Facebook and C-Sexy Safe Sports 23 on IG. And that's our show for today. Until next time, this is Sonya with C-Sexy Safe Sports and I will see you on the radio.